After generations as a European colony, Louisiana joined the young American nation at the turn of the 19th century. And less than 60 years later, she would tear herself away from it again. In those intervening years, however, political, economic, and cultural forces combined to begin the long process of Americanizing Louisiana, a process that, some feel, continues to this day. At the dawn of the new century, a young American sailed down the Mississippi River and took command of the vast territory known as Louisiana. His name was William Charles Cole Claiborne. Along with General James Wilkinson and a small American army, Claiborne hoisted an American flag over New Orleans, and on December 20th, 1803, Louisiana was joined to the United States, forever changing both. William C.C. C. Claiborne was only in his 20s when he became governor of the Louisiana Territory, an area larger than the entire United States at that time. Three quarters of the population and nearly all of the wealth were concentrated in lower Louisiana near the mouth of the Mississippi. The Americans soon discovered that even more formidable than the sheer size of Louisiana was the diversity of its people. Acquiring Louisiana raised significant challenges politically, religiously, culturally uh, for the Americans. The native population of Louisiana viewed the Americans with a great deal of suspicion. The Americans viewed the native Louisianians with a great deal of suspicion. Congress divided this region from the rest of the Purchase and assigned it to Governor Claiborne. The territory of Orleans, as it was called, encompassed most of the present state of Louisiana, except Baton Rouge and the Florida parishes. New Orleans was the largest city in the antebellum south and one of the leading ports of the continent. It was a bustling frontier community of more than 10,000. To the Americans, these people seemed utterly alien. At first glance, young Claiborne seemed ill-prepared for the enormous job of ruling a foreign people. He came to govern the colony without being able to speak French, uh, and in some ways, I think in some ways, was uh, perplexed by uh, by some of the uh, customs of the society that he found himself uh, the master of. A shrewd statesman, Governor Claiborne quickly learned to play the game of Louisiana politics. Of course, at times, even he found it difficult to embrace these strange Creoles. To bring these folks to their senses, we'll have to aim cannons at them and knock down the walls of the city from top to bottom. Some Creoles came to see New Orleans as a city under enemy occupation. A few of the French officers and citizens are mortified at the loss of this delightful country and seem to foster great hatred to the Americans. It requires much address and prudence to preserve the harmony of the city. They despised the American as being uncouth. They knew they would not be able to absorb the Americans the way they had absorbed the Spanish, that their culture would be swamped. And they were right. Americans pour in daily, not in families, but in large bodies. The leading gentlemen, when not talking of tobacco and 